Peace family, this is Nisi Rashawn L. I'm here to show you my African Tell people if library. they want to know what they need to be reading, what they need to be watching to learn more about what's going on in the system of white supremacy um, and what they can do to fight it and what they can expect. Um, they can inbox me and I'll give them the information. So to make it easier on myself, I'm gonna actually make a video and I will simply send this video out to everybody whenever they contact me and say they're interested in the information nope I'm not giving out anything free you need to invest in your people like you invest in white people and everyone else who doesn't look like you just like I did I purchased these books with my own money um, because I believe in my people and that's what I'm gonna do keep doing I'm gonna always it's almost I'm gonna I my goal is to have everything in my house be owned by blacks black people were selling it all right so so this is my black library that I recently started most of my everything I purchased for the most part I would say like 99% of it is black owned from a black owned company we have curly kids coloring book um, these are just I'm just showing you really quickly some of the stuff that's in the library for my children Oh, Makimba had a farm. Uh, we all went on safari, a counting journey through Tanzania. And these are just some of the books I read to my children. African nursery rhymes. I believe it's important that we indoctrinate black supremacy into our children, that black is supreme. Um, they are like indoctrinated from birth that whiteness is supreme and that shit is old. Um, we have big hair, don't care. I don't even have a daughter, but I teach my sons that black girls are beautiful and black women are beautiful. Um, am I small? Mimi Ni Mdoga. We're actually gonna learn some Swahili. We're learning Swahili because that is our official language. Um, majority of people that are in Africa, Swahili is the language. Okay, so getting away from the children's books, let's show you some of the books I have. And it's, these books come from my fiance's library and my library combined. Most of them are my books and he has a ton of books at his home. So some of the books you want to read to teach you about white supremacy and what's going, what is white supremacy? What is, what is racism really? Racism is a system. Racism is a system to teach, to keep a race oppressed, to keep a race from winning, to keep a race from rising up. So we have this book by Carter G. Woodson called The Miseducation of the Negro. This book goes into detail how we are miseducated from birth until adulthood so that we are basically being indoctrinated to believe that white is best. Then you have the ISIS papers. Dr. Francis Cresswell saying, everybody needs to have this in their library. Stat, ASAP. And you need to be reading, turn off of love and hip hop and empire, read a book. Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust by John Henry Clark. The uh, African slave. origin of civilization, myth or reality, sheep out of antidiop. We're not even taught. <laughs> where we originally come from or what the origin of our civilization is. We're taught about white people's lives, not ours. Um, there is nothing wrong with black students by Jawaza Kanjufu. Uh, this is something I bought for my sons because there's obviously an attack on black boys as they try to send them off to prison. Um, this is another book I read for my children. It's called Psychoacademic Holocaust, the Special Education and ADHD Wars Against Black Boys by Dr. Umar Johnson. He's a doctor of clinical psychology and certified school psychologist. If you don't this know, man has helped to save my life with my children. They had they were they have been attacking my children since birth, of course, since they joined the the white racist school system. 
They tried to put my Avery, who was 10 years old. They had him. No, they didn't try. They put him in special ed and didn't tell us it was special. They called it IEP. I didn't realize it was special ed until I talked, until I started studying his videos and studying under Dr. Umar Johnson. And then I told that school, get my son out of special ed now. They claimed they were putting him in IEP um, to help him with his speech at first. He needed like speech therapy or whatever. And then they were like, oh, well, he needs some help with his reading. Then they also tried to get my son to repeat kindergarten. What child repeats kindergarten? We were absolutely against it. And we said, not no, we said, hell no. Like I hated that teacher and it was everything in me not to try to, not to kill her. Um, and so now my 10 year old has just gotten a feedback. We just had a parent teacher conference with this teacher. She said he's an extremely excellent writer. He reads extremely well. Um, the only thing is he's a little bit shy, but he's brilliant. She's like, once you get him talking, he is brilliant. And guess who already knew this one? Guess who has two thumbs and already knew that? This mom. So that's why you need to be studying people like this because they are for you. They're not working against you. So you need to study people like this who are there to help your children, help your family. This man is, he's everything. Say my child, like my son was he still me in special education right now if I wasn't studying. Dr. Dr. If I wasn't studying Dr. Martin years ago, after Trayvon Martin, I found him and I just started following him and watching his videos every single day. I was like obsessed. I turned off, you know, the silliness on TV, loving hip hop, whatever. I was like, I really wasn't watching that stuff like that anyway, but. I turned that crap off and I started listening to his videos and I learned so much from my sons. So if you're having problems with the school system, I know you probably are <laughs> trying to hold your child back or whatever, then you need to, you need to follow Dr. Umar Johnson on YouTube, um, add him to your Facebook, like his page. When he comes to speak, come see him, go see him. He's just an amazing, influential, extremely brilliant. He's so intelligent, it's disgusting. And yes, he's black. Black people can be intelligent. There you go. I saw him in Baltimore. I want to say I've seen him twice in Baltimore. He's amazing. I can't even say enough good things. Um, then we have, and he's also building a black school, which I'll tell you more about later. Um, then we have 100 amazing facts about the Negro with complete proof. Because we always have to have proof, right? You can't just believe it like we do when white people say something. We need a million... <laughs> things to prove what we say so there you go so if you want to know you want to really know the truth don't take my word for it read a book then you have black root science which to me is like my black bible um i say this because if this book breaks down the very beginning of our existence um it didn't say we started with adam and eve that's for sure you know so <laughs> So I tell everybody to read this book. Someone recommended this to me, this this cool guy. I uh, uh, can't remember his name. He's from out of Ohio. He was in my black group that I created on Facebook. And he told me about this book and I had never heard of it. And I got it and I literally cannot put it down. It's like the Bible. It is hard to read all the way through. So it's like years later, I'm still trying to finish it, but I am determined to finish this book. So get this book in your library. Um, it's The author's mold. Modi Mancho, I believe it was written, I can't remember who it was written by, but it was told by like a griot, like there's a gr African griot answering these questions. And African griots are basically um, people in African tribes who are taught to memorize facts and information. And so we used to not write things down a long time ago. And then once we stopped that, that tribal practice of um, passing down that skill, to our children because the white people came and uh, enslaved us and broke us from our families and our tribes, then we had to start writing things in books. That's why it's so important to pick up a book and read a book because a lot of our s secrets are in the books. So white people have their own books on white supremacy and how to be, you know, what codes they have to follow. You'll find that out in Head and Cutters 4. So they have their own books. So you're crazy if you're not reading your books. And and probably their books too. Re study them like they study us. Then I also purchased Black Root Science, A Beginner's Guide to Tracing the African-American Family Tree. 
um because i'm just obsessed with knowing where we came from um this is by tony tony burrows i'm obsessed with knowing where we came from i want to know my truth i never learned it in, in school they're not going to teach a black child shit about where we came from so take it upon yourself to teach yourself and okay. teach your children. Don't wait for white people to teach you. You're your there truth. to teach your child about your truth. Um, Christianity Before Christ by John G. Jackson. Because I wanted to understand Christianity more. Which I learned quite a bit about it. And I am now considering myself. My whole family, my children included, are now Hebrew Israelites. Um, we're Jews. And I don't need to say a black Jew. Because Jews are black. <laughs> the original Jew is black. Um, that was the first quote-unquote religion. It wasn't really religion. We were just living our way of life. And white people came and started to study uh, as like they did with everything what we did. And then they created this this religion. And then each religion that was created after that was, con was created to, you know, gather people together and control other people who studied other religions. And so by the time Christianity came, it was just straight up like trying to control like Jewish, Jew people, Jews. And a lot of the black people fled or were exiled or murdered if they didn't want to become a Christian. Um, and it, the whole story just disgusts me. Like I literally want nothing to do with Christianity. And if you read these books, you'll find out how crazy you look if you still consider yourself a Christian. I'm sorry I said it. Um, there's another great guy to listen to. His name is... Oh my gosh, O'Berry Hendrix. I think I want to say his name is O'Berry Hendrix, and he's a theologian. He he went to school. He has a lot, you know, he has lots of knowledge about this stuff, and he's just amazing. I think you should uh, listen to him as well. Yes, I have my praxis too because I'm thinking of becoming a licensed teacher to teach our children their truth. Um, then we have the destruction of Black civilization, great issues of a race from 4500 BC to 2000 AD by Chancellor Williams. And this is just breaking down. Let me read the back for you. This is really just breaking down the, the civilization of the black, the black uh, race. Uh, let's see. So these are important things to read. This book is important to read to understand where we went wrong, how are we conquered, why were we conquered, you know, like why were they coming for us to begin with and all that good stuff. So again, don't take my word for it. Read a book. Then we have Restoring the Village, Solutions for the Black Family, Jawaza Kanjufu. I think I got these, this book and this one from, uh, I can't remember. It's not that one. I want to say I got it from like either the Black Network, the Black Business Network. Uh, one of those black owned businesses, supporting my own people, getting that knowledge. Then this is the wonderful Metu Netter, volume one. If you've never heard of this, slap yourself. It's by Ron Unefer Amin. And this is like, uh, it's like Black Root Science. It's the very beginning of the very beginning of just our existence and why things are and why things have come to be. And it is really going over like the universe and science and all that good stuff. So this is a great oracle of Tabuti and the Egyptian system of spiritual civil cultivation. And let me read the back for you because it's, it's a lot. It's hard to explain it. Um, the oracles of ancient black civilization aimed to guide individuals and nations in all areas of life. Through them, it was possible to discover the spiritual cause and meaning to earthly events. These great oracles prescribe the words of power and other occult forces that can be manipulated by the, initi by the initiate in order to control the events in his life. In this book, a landmark indeed, you will find the hidden keys that have eluded Egyptologists for ages. You will learn how to objectively evaluate every belief method and spiritual measure that can be taken in a given situation in life. This book with its companion oracle cards will allow you to help yourself as well as others through the foreknowledge of upcoming events and the spiritual causes behind them. So maybe it can help you understand why Donald Trump just won the presidency. 
So I would suggest you have this book. I think there's a volume two. Get it in your library. Study it. Read it. Um, to help you understand events that are happening in life and just how to how to respond to events and that's going that's bound to happen. Then we had a cons the conspiracy to destroy black women by Michael Porter. This book is amazing. I read it so fast. It is just talking about why they're destroying black women, how they destroy black women. Um, and I love that it's written by a man, a black man, so that people cannot be like, oh, she's just crazy or she's a man hater or blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> so it says here, oh, Jawanza Kanjufu actually published this book, who's, who's the uh, author of the two other books I showed you earlier. So some of the questions on the back are civil rights organizations and the church infested with sexism. Why is the black community and its leaders silent about rape and wife abuse? What are so many male rappers trying to convey in their music about women? How have some African-American women struggled against racism and sexism? Is the future of the race in the hands of black mothers? What are the challenges facing black women in finding a good black man? So that's just some of the, some of the objectives it covers. And it's, it's an amazing book, get it. Um, so then we have, okay, now we, we get into the good stuff. <laughs> this is my book. I tell everyone to read this book. It's from Babylon to Timbuktu uh, by my man, Rudolph R. Windsor, my brother, a history of ancient black races, including the black Hebrews. And this book is so powerful. It discussed how Hebrews went from the Holy Land and how we ended up in Africa. And why that happened. Read this book. If you don't know why I'm a Hebrew Israelite, read this book. And I'm going to show you the second book, that I, my favorite one. This is the book to read after the other one. I didn't know that he had a book prior to this one until I read this one. And he was like, oh, there, read my other When you read my other book. And I was like, there's another one? And so I went and I ran, and ran and got the other one. So this is called The Valley of the Dry Bones. The Conditions That Face Black People in America, Rudolph R. Windsor. And this book discusses um, the, it discusses what's going on now. It talks a lot about the politics, the Democratic Party and the Republican parties. It talks about how black people are currently dead, because we are. Um, a lot of us are still sleeping, we're still dead, and we haven't awakened, we're not alive. Um, and it's just talking about our, the, what we're facing from, this is written in like the 80s, you know, and he accurately describes what is going, it's almost as if it was written today in 2016. Let me see when it's copyright. Some stuff is updated. So the first edition was 1986. It was reprinted in 1988. And then 16th printing was 2006. So you got to get this book, guys. Like, come on. Like, if you're running around, you don't understand why Donald Trump just won being president. If you don't understand why some black people were like, I'm not voting like myself. I didn't vote. It's like, for what? You, If you read these books that are right there at your fingertips in Amazon or wherever, you know, try to find a black owned book. So I'm trying to get these books in my store eventually. But um, my store is Lockstar Revolution at www.lsrclothing.com. And I sell products for Black Pride and African Pride and for children and families. And anything that our people are going to need, I'm getting into my store or already have it in my store. So I do plan on carrying books like this eventually if I can get them in there. Um, I want it to be a one-stop shop for everything Black people need. So this book is just... These two books are powerful. Like this one goes into the very beginning of our existence, of African-American existence. And then The Valley of the Dry Bones discusses what we're going through right now once we came to America. So this one's from our birthplace, which is um, Israel and or Judea, and then which is now Israel. And then is showing how we went from Judea to Timbuktu, which is Africa, which is now Africa. And then we are now living in America, so this book covers that. And so you'll see why a lot of us are not voting because Democrat and the Republican Party are the same thing. 
And this book is amazing too because it will actually go into what's going to happen in the future. And it's going to happen because, <laughs> yeah, it was written in like the 1980s and everything it says is going to happen has been prophesied already by God and it's in the Bible. And this book actually, like everything I say with black people, we have to provide a billion parts of proof just for anyone to believe anything we say, even though we're obviously the original people, we're obviously telling the truth, but we still have to come forth with all this all these facts that no one else has to provide to come up with their crap that they're saying or putting in our children's books um, at school. So this book has scriptures from the Bible to back up and support what he's saying. Because even though the Bible is not all true, majority of it is. They're not that intelligent to write, a, write that whole Bible. So a lot of it's truth and a lot of it's not. Um, and so that you, if you know, if you read books, you would know what's true and what's not. Let me just leave it at that because it's hard. It's too deep to go into in this video. So this book is called The Truth About Black Biblical Hebrew Israelites, also known as the Jews. Um, the world's best kept secret. What happened to the true black Jews in the year 70 CE, um, AD? And this is by Ella J. Hewley. And this is another book I got because I was still trying to figure out were we Jews? Like, I just didn't, you know, again, like I told you, my parents didn't educate me on my true existence as a black person. I didn't know where we came from. I had to take a DNA test to find it that my family, came, my family on my mom's side has come, originates from Kenya. Um, and I'm digging and digging and digging to know our truth. If you don't want to know your truth, this video isn't for you. If you inboxed me or you follow me and you've asked me questions, this is who the video is for. If you want to know who you are and you see there, there's a star of David. Yep, that's all, all of that is ours. Okay, and it was taken from us. Read your books, people. Know your destiny. Know what's, know what's yours. Um, and then the next thing I recommend, if you're trying to find your truth and find and find out, trying to find out who black, who are we as black Americans? Where did we come from? How did we get here? Why are we here? Why are they killing us on camera and getting away with it? Why are we scared to death right now? Because Donald Trump is president. Why, why, why? You have hidden colors. Re watch hidden colors. Hidden Colors 2, Hidden Colors 3, and I have Hidden Colors 4 upstairs in my DVD player because I've watched it with my children. And I've watched it with my sons several times. Several times. We love that movie and we keep watching it and analyzing it and going over it. So I bought the whole set. I bought this set actually several times um because it keeps getting misplaced i think we were walking off with my dvds so that's that's fine if you need that knowledge that bad take it have it um the second i want you to have it the second hidden colors actually has my name in the credits and um my children's father's name because we actually donated money to make sure the second one was made because they didn't they, they made the first one and then they were having trouble making the second one they didn't have the funding to produce this, they reached out to the, to the community, the black community, we made sure it got made because this movie needed to be made. This whole series needs to be made. I'm looking for the next one, the fifth one, the sixth one, the seventh one, like tell us what to do next. These are the most powerful movies I've ever watched that discuss our truth as a black race. And then there's a, four, you know, the fourth one I have is upstairs. Get your set now. Don't be looking for nothing for free. Don't be asking nobody for nothing for free. Put your money into your black your black people's pockets. You just looked at a whole library where majority of those these books and these DVDs came from a black owned business or is black or is black owned and is going to a black person whether Amazon got you know got a cut whatever a black person is getting a cut too because that's their that's Tariq Nasheed's book. Those are his uh. These are his movies, and this is his DVDs, and this is his franchise. So it's just like if anyone else, Superman or Marvel Comics or whatever, sold their stuff through Amazon. I mean, they're gonna get a cut. So you gotta think like a black. You gotta think like a black business person. You gotta think economically. Okay, so that's what. Okay, let me. All right, guys. So oh, you see my true in the background. <laughs> there you go. More black owned. Um, products right here. If I can find it and it's black on, I'm getting it. Um, so that's my my library. It's not as big as I want it to be. Um, a lot of the books, we also have them already. Like I have the book. Um, actually, I'm going to show you, show you this other book I have. 
but a lot of them are at my fiance's home. Um, his father's used to be his father's house, and it's in their library. It's, they've collected them over the years, and his dad passed them down to him. So let me see here. We also have my son is sleeping. So this book, Marcus Garvey, Message to the People, The Course of African Philosophy, is extremely important. Um, this is uh, basically all Marcus Garvey, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey's um, ideas and ideologies and philosophies from what he learned as he created the biggest African movement in history. Um, and he was exiled, but right before he died, he educated and trained several people and then they came together and put this book and like I told you before we now because we're so split up and we're not all living in one village anymore or under one tribe with our you know traditions and all that we had to put things in books now so that we can still get that knowledge so you you our ancestors used to be killed for trying to read and this is why because they knew that our ancestors we're leaving messages on the wall, like in Egypt um, or in Africa. There's so many messages that our ancestors left behind for us that white people and um, went and they have translated and they but they twist the words around for their benefit. And we're sitting here with our faces in the TV and not reading the messages that our ancestors felt that we needed to have for our very survival, our very existence. And you, you don't, like Mark, Marcus Garvey said, a man, a person who doesn't know their history is like a tree without roots. If you don't know your history and where you came from and who you are and where your great, 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 great grandparent came from and where your family derives from, you're just existing. You're just, you're just floating about. You don't know what your purpose is. You don't know why you're here. You don't know why people are, trying, are killing you or after you. Like you don't have any clue of anything. You're just there. So if you want to know who you are and why you're here and why you exist, these are just some of the books. There's so many more, but these, the Black Root Science books, um, the books by Rudolph Windsor and The Hidden Colors are probably some of the books and DVDs I say begin with. And then Ice, and Isis Papers by Dr. Francis Chris Welsing. I say begin with those books and also the book by Dr. Umar Johnson, um, the special education and ADHD on black boys, work as black boys. Read those, start with those, and then everything else, just keep reading, keep reading. Read with your children, read by yourself, read in the, in the doctor's office when you're waiting on some. Read and never stop reading, never put the book down, just keep reading. Turn off the TV and keep reading. If you wanna watch something on TV, I suggest get rid of the cable box, get your YouTube. If you want to read something, you know, if you want to watch TV, I suggest get rid of your cable box, get on YouTube, and follow Dr. Boyce Watkins, Dr. Omar Johnson, Dr. John Henry Clark, um, Dr. Francis Cuswell. There's so many videos. Um, I also like to watch um, Dr. Malcolm, not Dr. I'm sorry, Malcolm X. He's just so brilliant, he might as well be a doctor, but. He's probably one of my favorite activists um, because he said what he felt like saying and he didn't shy away from the, in, you know, the enemy. Um, and the reason I put quotations is because some people will say, oh, it's a conspiracy. It's not. I mean, we see it on TV every time on the news is they're killing us. But um, he never shied away from white supremacy. He never shied away from who he, who, who is perceived as our enemy, who we believe is our enemy. Um, he would look them straight in the eye, he would talk to them, and he was just a powerful, strong black man who, he was a good father, good husband, and just the epitome to me of what a black man should be then and what he should be today. He was a leader of his people, he was trying to lead us in the right direction, um, he's just amazing. And you can follow these people on YouTube if you feel like you, you want to watch something, something, like I'm the type where I don't, I don't even like to watch anything that doesn't have any substance in it. Like, that's not going to teach me anything. So, I don't know. That's just me. So, um, I hope you guys found this video helpful. 
uh, if you want this knowledge, you know, if you have any questions, you can inbox me or you can email me at s yarashalam at gmail.com and that's s y a r a s h a l a m at gmail.com. Until I speak to you guys again, take care of yourselves and your black brothers and sisters. Um, peace, love, and light. Thank you.